Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton has done everything that he possibly can do as Attorney General to criminalize abortions. It's not good enough that Texas already bans abortions after six weeks, which effectively bans almost all abortions because most women don't even know that they're pregnant at that time. But he is trying to further criminalize abortions and he's trying to block nonprofits from assisting women who try to seek out of state abortions. Now, as a result, said nonprofits are suing him to try to stop him from doing just that. The problem is that in the midst of this lawsuit, they're trying to subpoena him and he's desperately trying to avoid being served. Now, you might have seen the headlines about how he ran away from the server to try to avoid getting subpoenaed. The headlines really don't do this story justice. This is genuinely bizarre. What he did to avoid being served I mean, it just speaks to how craven and desperate Republicans are and how often they're willing to run away from their own actions and then subsequently play the victim every single time. So his server, uh, Ernesto Martin Herrera, says that he spoke to a woman at Paxton's residence named Angela. And, you know, he knocks on the door. She answers and says, look, he's on a phone call right now. He can't speak. So Ernesto waits around. So an hour passes and nothing happens until a black Chevy Tahoe pulls up. Then 20 minutes pass and Ernesto finally sees Paxton again. And then this happened, quote, I walked up the driveway approaching Mr. Paxton and called him by his name. As soon as he saw me and heard me call his name out, he turned around and ran back inside the house through the same door in the garage. Herrera wrote in the sworn affidavit, Angela Paxton then exited the house, got inside a Chevrolet truck in the driveway, started it and opened the doors. Quote, a few minutes later, I saw Mr. Paxton ran from the door inside the garage towards the rear door behind the driver's side. Herrera wrote, I approached the truck and loudly called him by his name and stated that I had court documents for him. Mr. Paxton ignored me and kept heading for the truck. And he ultimately fled the scene. to behave in this way to flee the scene is just really bizarre considering you are the attorney general for the state of texas now why did the literal attorney general behave in such a bizarre manner well of course because he's the victim and he was terrified he tweeted out it's clear that the media wants to drum up another controversy involving my work as attorney general so they're attacking me for having the audacity to avoid a stranger lingering outside my home and showing concern about the safety and well-being of my family Mm, okay, so you were afraid, except Ernesto literally told Angela, I'm assuming that's his wife, but he doesn't know, so he said that the woman who identified herself said her name was Angela, but either way, he told you he was trying to talk to you, he had a manila envelope in his hand, I'm guessing, if you put two and two together, this is the attorney general of the state, perhaps he's serving you, why would you assume that this person is uh, out to get you? I don't think that he actually believes this. I think that this is his excuse that he's using because it looks bad for the attorney general to flee from somebody who's trying to serve him with a subpoena. So what does he do? Oh, he claims he's the victim. I mean, Jesus, Republicans, even when they are very clearly in the wrong, they absolutely unquestionably always portray themselves as the victims. Now, lucky for Ken Paxton, this lawsuit isn't likely going to go anywhere. The Texas Tribune explains, later on Monday, this is after he ran away from the process server, Paxton filed two requests, a motion to quash the subpoena and another to seal the certificates of service, which included the affidavit from process server. His lawyers argued that the server loitered at the attorney general's home for over an hour, repeatedly shouted at him and accosted Paxton and his wife. U.S. District Judge Robert Pittman granted both requests early Tuesday, hours after the affidavit had been published. Paxton has been under indictment for securities fraud for seven years and faces a whistleblower lawsuit from former top deputies who accused him of abuse of office. Paxton has denied wrongdoing. Well, of course. So I just love the way that they frame this. Republicans are the most deceitful people, the most dishonest people in the entire world. You tell him to wait because he's busy or you imply that he should wait because he's busy. He can't come to the door right now because he's on the phone and he waits and then you accuse him of loitering. This is a process server. I mean, what's suspicious about that? This is the attorney general and you're saying, oh, no, 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 this is completely unacceptable. And a judge is like, yeah, yeah, OK, believable. I just I don't know what to say about this. I, I mean, it's not necessarily surprising to me, but Republicans are so shady. Uh, they don't care about law and order and. Yeah, they're willing to literally run and drive away 
flee the scene from a process server all to avoid being subpoenaed. It's just predictable, but I can't not talk about stories like this because it just shows you that they're fucking hypocrites. They cry law and order. They claim that Democrats have no respect for the rule of law and they do things like this. And Ken Paxton is not alone here because Republicans are avoiding subpoenas from the January 6th committee, for example. And, you know, this is just what they do now. So, you know, he's lucky enough to have a judge side with him, but it's just embarrassing that he like went to that length to run away, knowing that this would probably become a story, but not caring, just fleeing, having his wife bring up a getaway vehicle and fleeing. I mean, it's just this sums up American politics in 2022, folks. When you acting like a beta, 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 be